What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 build video. Now shout out to the DoD, Disciples of Doom. And today's build video is going to be another solo Dark Zone build. This time I am highlighting the apartment that is the named SMG with perfectly measured. So what I did is I went ahead and I threw a build together that I could use in the Dark Zone solo for both PvE and PvP. So what I'm going to show you is some good gameplay. It's actually pretty funny. Um, there's some times when people pop off on me and I kill the whole team. There's times that I pop off and I don't shoot at all just to see what the other person does. Sometimes they shoot and sometimes they don't. It's actually quite hilarious. And then I'll show you guys uh, me doing landmarks from all the different dark zones just to show you its sustainability. The power is there and the sustainability is there, but man oh man is it fun to watch people try to pop rogue on you when you're at full you know, stacks, it's game over. But don't take my word for it, let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up smash that like support the video please if you are new to this channel subscribe we are about to hit 31,000 subscribers so thank you so much for the ongoing support now if you have any questions at all about my solo dark zone build series or about this build in particular let me know in the comment section below I am glad to help and I try to answer as many comments as I can but all right, enough of that. Let's get into the gameplay and then we will come back for the build breakdown. A shade agent has claimed the dark zone drop. Dark zone drop has expired. Rogue agent eliminated.
initiating rogue protocol. Rogue striker drone detected. Hilo is headed back. Contaminated gear detected.
And welcome back. So you got to see some gameplay of me popping rogue randomly on people and seeing what happened. You see uh, people popping rogue on me. You saw me, you know, clearing landmarks, doing some funny stuff, and all of that jazz. But most importantly, it is all solo Dark Zone. But enough about that. Let's jump into the build breakdown. That's what you're here for. So here we go. This is my... DZ build for solo players featuring the apartment SMG. Now starting off at the top, I am using the gunner specialization. Reason being is gunner regenerates your armor, it get or regenerates your ammo, sorry. It gives you armor on kill and whenever I pop a armor kit, I get bonus armor as well. Now, those things definitely help out my chest piece because I am running Perfect Intimidate. So every time I get that bonus armor in any way, shape, or form, I'm able to have that proc, and it gives me some crazy damage numbers. Now, that's the specialization. Let's talk about the weapons. Now, this build is centered around the apartment, so here it is. This is my apartment with no stacks at all and it has 98.3k total damage. This one is god rolled, so everything's maxed out. We have max SMG damage, max crit chance, and max damage to targets out of cover. In my opinion, damage to targets out of cover is the most important attribute for this weapon because it gives you 10%. Now that damage to targets out of cover is multiplicative, so you want as much multiplicative damage as possible. Now my secondary, is my favorite um it's the eagle bear uh, i've loved this weapon ever since it came out now this one's at 87.9k total damage god rolled max ar damage health damage and headshot damage now what i like about this is eagles strike now the talent that comes on this eagle bear or eagle strike your accuracy is increased the more you fire the weapon and it goes up to 30 percent more accuracy now if I get a headshot kill, I'll get tenacity. Now that buff only lasts for 15 seconds. However, 
it negates damage that is incoming to you while that buff is active. And if you can get up to three kills within that 15 second period, you will negate all incoming damage. It's pretty crazy. It's like its own mini god mode thing that's going on. Now my sidearm is a double barrel sawed off. This is just in case things get really rough. I have preservation on here so it gives me armor as soon as I get a kill with it. It has 1.1 million total damage with max shotgun damage, 7 damage to armor, and 8 damage to targets out of cover. So those are my weapons. You already know about the specialization, so let's get into the actual build. This is a pretty standard Hunter's Fury build in my opinion. The only thing is, is I switched up and put the memento on there for the dark zone because we all know that as soon as you get those stacks of uh, the memento to proc, you have weapon damage, you have skill efficiency, and you have armor regeneration, which I have come to find out that even without any like armor regen rolls, you're still getting around 49k armor regen just from having the memento. It, it's nuts. Now, quick overview of the build I am running, the Memento with Perfect Intimidate and Four Piece Hunter's Fury. I rolled everything but one to blue, so I have 1.6 million armor, and then I have the one red to go with the Memento, which brings up my base damage with no stacks at all at 98.3k for the apartment. Now let's do deep dives into the build. Starting with the mask, Hunter's Fury. So let's talk about the gear set bonuses. So having two pieces, I get 15% shotgun and SMG damage. For three pieces, I get 20% armor on kill, which does help out with the gunner specialization. So I technically have 30% armor on kill. Not only that, but it gives you 100% health on kill. So it doesn't matter what you know amount of health or armor I have as soon as I get that kill I'll get it back and then the four piece gives you that talent apex predator now I'm not running a chest piece I'm not running a backpack so all of this that you can see right here on your screen is what you get so apex predator enemies within 15 meters will receive a debuff this will amplify your weapon damage against them by 20% so just by being around an enemy, I'll see the indicator, which will tell me where that enemy is. And as soon as I see that indicator, I know for a fact that I have at least 20% amplified damage as soon as I see that enemy. Now killing a debuffed enemy with that weapon will disorient all other enemies within five meters. This will amplify my weapon damage by 5% for 10 seconds and that will stack up to five times. So I have an opportunity to get up to 45% amplified damage just from the Hunter's Fury. Now if you saw the gameplay footage when I was taking out those landmarks and all of that, I was getting over half of these stacks. So I know for a fact I was getting way more than the 20% amplified that you would normally get from apex predator it was actually showing i was getting more likely around 40 percent amplified damage i didn't get the max to get up to the 45 percent but i definitely did get close now as far as the attributes for this mask they are all maxed out i have max weapon damage max crit damage and a max crit damage mod now going to the Memento backpack. This is my favorite thing to run solo in the dark zone just because it gives you everything. It gives you skill efficiency, it gives you armor regen, it gives you bonus armor, it gives you damage, it, just the whole nine. It gives you a core attribute for each of them. It, it's just, overall, it's a great item, especially for the dark zone. So the Memento has three core attributes. This one has max weapon damage, max armor, and that one plus skill tier. Now for the mod, I used a max crit damage mod. Now the reason I am using the memento bag is for the talent kill confirmed. Every time I kill an enemy and you saw in the gameplay, they would drop a trophy. Uh, it's similar to the color of special ammo, actually. Now, the first time I pick up these 
trophies, I'll get buffs based off of my core attributes. So in this case, with the build I have set up right here, I have two red core attributes, five blue core attributes, and one yellow core attribute. So every time I pick up a trophy, I get 10% weapon damage, I get 50% bonus armor, and then I also get 5% skill efficiency. However, that's just for the short-term buffs. Now the long-term buffs is where this build shines. You can get up to 30 stacks of a long-term buff for this backpack. Not only that, but it lasts for five minutes. So all you have to do is get one kill within five minutes and you can keep these stacks for another five minutes. It refreshes every time you get a kill. Now, this is important because when you're doing landmarks and stuff like that, every now and then you'll get a rogue or a team that wants to try to bully you. They'll try to shoot you in the back, whatever it is. And if you have 30 stacks on your character just sitting there, that is 30% more weapon damage, 30% more skill efficiency, and 3% armor regen just from the backpack alone. Not only that, but if I pop a med kit, I get bonus armor that way, and it procs my perfect intimidate. Not only that, but whenever the enemy gets close to me, it procs the Hunter's Fury, which gives me amplified damage on top of that. So that's why you can see solo, this build is super strong, ridiculously strong. Now a lot of you might say, well what about in a team, what about this, what about that? Well for one, this video is about solo Dark Zone builds, so there's that, it's for solo use, and for two, the only reason I would stray away from using this in a team is that to get these memento stacks, you have to get the kill and you have to confirm that kill. Now, I don't know about whatever teams you're, you're running with, but the teams I usually run with, it's let's see who can kill the enemy faster. So if I'm sitting there competing with, you know, two or three different agents trying to kill the exact same target, chances are sometimes, I might not be able to get that kill, so then I'm losing my memento stack. However, if you're running solo, you get all the kills, you get all the stacks, and you are good to go. Everybody's an enemy in the dark zone at that point. So yeah, there's my little two cents. Moving on to the gloves, Hunter's Fury. Now the attributes I have on this, max armor and max crit chance. You want the crit chance because we are using an AR with the SMG. Going to the knee pads, Hunter's Fury again, max armor, and then this time crit damage. Now I know I could use like a God rolled pair of knee pads, but I really wanted that armor core attribute. So what I did is I just rolled a few knee pads until I found crit. That way I could roll armor on here. So I can make this build hit a little bit harder once I optimize it. But for this one, max armor and 9% crit damage. And then the last piece of Hunter's Fury, the holster. Again, max armor and crit damage, this time 10.2. Again, I'm working on optimizing it. We all know it's expensive, but once I do, it'll be a little bit stronger than what it is right now. And then the final piece of this puzzle in my opinion, one of the most important pieces, because not only in PVE do you proc bonus armor a lot, but every time I use a med kit, I get bonus armor as well. So in case I am at full 30 stacks and someone shoots me in the back, I can turn around, pop a med kit, and then boom, I already have perfect intimidate. Which goes into this chest piece. This is the Hunter killer chess piece. Now the only way to get this chess piece is you have to hunt down and eliminate all of the year two hunters, collect the off-white keys, and open the off-white chest that is in the Haven in New York City. Now once you do that you will get this chess piece. This is the named Golden Gear chess piece with perfect intimidate. So while you have bonus armor, it will amplify all your total weapon damage by 40% 
to all enemies within 10 meters. Now you know with the Apex Predator of Hunter's Fury, that goes off every 15 meters. So you have to get a little bit closer to get to that 10 meter range, but you will see it because you will have that Intimidate icon show up on your screen. Now, this is the same in PvE and PvP, so you can run this in the dark zone and still get your 40% amplified damage just like that. Now, remember, the Hunter's Fury can go up to 45% amplified damage. This is 40% amplified damage. So just off of those two things alone, I can get upwards of 85% amplified damage on a apartment. That's not the Lady Death, that's the apartment. It's crazy. Now, back to the Golan Gear chest piece. Now the Golan Gear brand set bonus I get from this build status effects. Now the only thing that really helps out on this build are my skills because I am using the uh, EMP sticky and what's the other skill I'm using? Oh, and I'm using the Banshee Pulse from the Gunner Specialization. So I'm Disorient, uh, Disorient and Disrupt are the two statuses that I'm using. Now, as far as the attributes go, I am still optimizing this build, so I will get a little bit more armor. I think when I max this out, it'll say 1.7 million, which is cool, so I'll do that. But as far as the other attributes, I'm max crit damage, max crit chance, and a max crit chance mod. And that leads us to the stats. Now this is for the apartment. Remember, it has perfectly measured. So the top half of the magazine has a 20% increase in firing rate, but minus 27% weapon damage. And then the bottom half of the magazine takes away that rate of fire increase and it gives me 33% weapon damage. Pretty nice. Now going to the weapon stats again, this is for the apartment. We're sitting at 98.3k weapon damage with 32.7k PvP weapon damage. I'm 1% away from max crit chance, I'm at 59, and 117 crit damage. Remember, because of my knee pads and holster, I'll be able to get this to about 120, 121 when I'm all maxed out. Now going to the offensive tab, I have 40% all weapon damage bonus with 45% SMG damage bonus. So every time I use the apartment, I am starting off with 85% damage bonus total. Now gear talents again, I'm running kill confirmed with perfect intimidate and Hunter's Fury. Now the defensive tab, I'm at 1.6 million armor, just about 1.7 with 488k armor on kill, 336k max health, and 10% explosion and uh, hazard. Now the reason why my explosive resistance and hazard protection are both at 10%, it is because of my watch level. And this is the disclosure I give for every single one of my build videos. Now a lot of you wanna just copy and paste and get the exact same numbers and the exact same results as I'm showing you here in this video. Now you can do that. You can even get higher numbers than me. I've shown you how. However, a lot of it has to do with your shade level. So as you can see here, I am shade level 2591. That means all of these attribute boxes are maxed out 50 of 50. So are you, if you are at or above shade level 1000, all of these attributes will be maxed out. You can copy and paste my build and get the exact same results as I do. Now, if you are below shade level 1000, some of these boxes will not be maxed out 50 of 50. Therefore, when you copy and paste my build, you might not get the exact same results. So if you're asking me, hey man, I put your build together, but I'm missing 3% crit chance, or hey man, I put your build together, but I'm missing, I, I, I don't even know, like 5% uh, crit damage. More chances than not, it's due to your watch level. So just remember that, be cognizant, and yeah, we'll be good. And there you have it, everyone. The apartment solo Dark Zone build from yours truly, Kamikaze Von Doom. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe to the channel. 
We are about to hit 31,000 on YouTube, so thank you so much. Don't forget to hit that like, support the video, and let me know in the comment section below what you think. Now take care everyone, and remember we are doing a survival stream tonight on Tom Clancy's The Division. So if you're on Xbox and you want to play survival with and or against me, uh, just wait until tonight's stream and you can join up and play survival either with or against yours truly. All right, you guys, Kamikaze Von Doom here. Hit that like, subscribe. I'll see you guys. Peace.